Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today we are going to talk on the subject of apathy and endeavour. And we have with us today Julia, Corinne and Rosina. And I believe it was your idea to talk about apathy, Julia. So Hmm. would you like to start off with that, please? Yes, yes, I'm happy to. Um, It was a subject that I thought might be of interest because it was a quality, I would say a negative quality, that was very much a part of the bringing down of another civilization that we talk about here in the foundation. And that was uh, at the time of Atlantis, where a group of people could see that things were going wrong, but just didn't come together individually or collectively to try and change things or do something about it that was positive. So I just thought it was an interesting subject. And I think today, in the today's world, I think we see examples of apathy. I think it's a very individual thing um, because it could come about for all kinds of reasons. You know, individual tapestry, it might be affected by the tapestry. Or it could be just something that you have developed a sort of mindset of apathy because of something that's happened. So I think it is a very individual thing. But as I say, I think it is a negative thing as opposed to what we'll talk about later, and that is endeavour. So how easy is it perhaps for people to realise they're being apathetic? I don't know, but it is something that if people can sit and think about think about themselves, you know, try and work out why they aren't maybe doing and thinking in ways that are a little bit more positive to work through something. As we know, it is easier said than done, especially in the world today. So it could be a lack of concern, a lack of interest, just a lack of enthusiasm. All sorts of reasons could be behind someone being apathetic and maybe something will come along to help people to realize how they are and maybe shape people out of that sort of mindset but I would say it's probably quite a common feeling today in the world because perhaps it's being so difficult things can be a bit overwhelming and maybe it's just easier to just sort of almost go inside yourself a bit and not try and think about something and put some effort into maybe working through something. These are difficult times and I I just think apathy is an example of something that is happening in our world and hopefully in the future as things develop and people realise they have a mind, their spirit that could help them um, there won't be so much apathy around. Thank you, Julia. Uh, that's interesting. So it, is there more apathy in the world today, do you think, than it has been in the past? What do you feel about this, Corinne? Apathy is is part of the flow of sloth, in a way. We know that the flaws have never been so strong as they are on the earth today. I can't tell really if apathy has been as strong as it is today on the earth, but we know that the flaws are very strong at the present time. And the way I see apathy is really when there is or there should be something to to do, perhaps something to say that is of importance. There is something to do, but it is not done. It means you do not bother, or it means it is not your problem, 
something is taking place, it is wrong, but you, you do not want to interfere. You do not want to put things right because you just prefer not to look at it. Or you acknowledge the problem, you look at it, but because of a little laziness, you think, oh, I'm not going to do something about it today. Perhaps I shall do something tomorrow. And, and the day after you think, oh, perhaps I shall do this later. So for me, apathy is not doing what should be done when it should be done. Evil is very strong on the earth at the present time because of apathy, because mankind has let evil grow when it could have been possible perhaps to interfere with it. So for me, apathy is contrary of a positive mindset of living, really. And I believe that apathy can lead to destroy the earth at the present time. Thank you, Corinne. That's uh, very interesting. Thank you. Now we'll go back to Julia again, but this time we'll look at the the alternative. Um, we've talked about apathy. Mm -hmm. Now, could we talk about endeavour, please? Yes. First thing to say is that I feel it's a very positive thing. I know it's a word that spirit, our tutors, rate very highly because it's more important we endeavour than perhaps we succeed at the end of whatever it is we are endeavouring because there's so much to be learnt in the endeavour. And really, if we do reach our goal or succeed or not, perhaps it's less important. Of course, that's not putting down the achievement if you do succeed of course that's wonderful but I think it's the endeavor that is so important because perhaps sometimes it is quite difficult to get going on to something and to put your mind to something and maybe you perhaps feel a little bit negative to start with but you feel responsible and I think responsibility is something that could be a part of both of these words tonight so if you feel that you perhaps should and could do something and you feel responsible towards it, then I think you put some effort in. And all of this is saying that this person is being positive. So to me, endeavour is a very positive word. And I think it can achieve much. I think it shows a great deal about a person in doing putting some endeavour in. And I feel that it sets a great example, perhaps, to others, uh, that they're trying and they're doing their best. And really, as we often say here, what more can be asked of us? And that is just to try and do the best we can. And, you know, if we fail, that's not going to be looked down upon or punished, certainly not from spirit's point of view or the great mind's point of view. They really do rate the effort, the endeavour that we put in to try. And perhaps sometimes we endeavour with something and we discover a lot more about ourselves. So we might realise that what we're endeavouring in is perhaps not so suited to us. And so we maybe channel our energies in another direction. But at the end of the day, the important thing is what do we learn in all this process? So I think it's a great word. I think and I wish that more people would um, recognise the importance of endeavour and not worry so much about what the outcome might be because of the learning, because of the progression that we would say you might achieve spiritually. That, to me, is far more important. Thank you, Julia. Now, Rosina. Now, let's take an example of a race, shall we? Now, there's going to be winners and there's going to be losers in any race. 
And the importance is not that you win. It is that you do the absolute best you possibly can. And whatever the result is, is what it is. How would you see Endeavour? To try your best, to do your best, and to face the challenge of it. And as you say, to endeavour to do your best. I think that one of the challenges in our world today is that although a spirit totally accept that the endeavouring part of what we do is the most important part and whether we win or we lose really doesn't matter. It it is the endeavour that does matter. Unfortunately, that can't be said for, for, for many in this world because I think that there is a feeling that if you've endeavoured to do something and you've not won, that somehow or other you're a failure. And I think that this is something which, sadly, I think a lot of people feel. And so therefore, often, they're scared to take on a challenge. They're scared to do something, to endeavour in something, because they're frightened of failure. And I think that is the thing that really needs to be addressed particularly in schools in terms of young children and how we celebrate people's successes and what we see as being successful. Do we just see success in terms of people who have won things or do we see it in terms of the effort that people have put in to endeavouring to achieve or win something and I think at the moment the emphasis is very much on whether someone wins something or not that's so in in terms of our sports in terms of academic success success in business making money whatever it is it's usually the success of that is measured by those who have won rather than those who haven't. So I think that that in our world really needs to change. And I think that if that did change, I think there would be, people would be happier to have a go at things and would not be so worried about failing. They would understand, like Julia said, that actually what we learn from endeavouring, what we learn from, I guess, from failing at doing something or not achieving something is far greater often than when we succeed. But that's not widely appreciated, I would say, in our world at the moment. Thank you, Rosina. Now, one of the experiences I had in my life that really had an effect upon me was a simple thing when my son was running in sports day he was would win everything he was very fast and would win everything and now he's just full of these red ribbons and things and yet his friend really didn't manage to do very well at all i remember his friend being really upset at the end of a race when again he didn't do so well and my son turned to him and gave him one of his own ribbons now to me (laughs) i was very touched by that the fact that my son's friendship with this lad meant more to him than the than the ribbons that he was winning that's how it seemed to me and I, i i was really touched by that so corinne endeavor How important is endeavouring to you? I believe it makes you feel alive. Sometimes, for some reasons, some people believe that they are not able to do something, but they have not even tried. Now, if you do not believe that you can't do it, and you try, you endeavour, even if it is very small, you will get a result. 
not to be the best, but you will get something. You will discover things. Perhaps you must even discover that you are able to do things that you thought you would never be able to do. And you might even surprise yourself because we have got a lot of abilities if, if only we, we would try. And I understand this word is so important for spirit because there is all this positive energy in, in endeavor. And what I would like perhaps to add to it is also, I'm not sure to say this well in English, but I try, perseverance. So it is to try and perhaps to try again. Endeavor for me is also something that not just to try and perhaps it works, perhaps not and so on, but to try and to try again and perhaps you fall and you stand and you try again. It is a, a positive way to live, to live this life. This life is a gift. It is a great opportunity for us being on the earth to go through experiences, to learn many things. If only we endeavor, we might live this life better, I would say. Thank you, Corinne. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, Padina, greetings to you. Yeah, greetings. Would you like to add to what's been said already? Yes, please, if I may. Of course. I would want to take you back a long, long way into history of spirits, way past the beginnings of your earth, a long time ago, when in spirit, there was not really much happening. There was not much development. And you could say that it was a form of apathy, a lack of responsibility. And over a period of time, evil came into being more and more. And as a consequence, those who were faced with evil found they could not ignore it. They could not run away from it. They could not have any sense of apathy towards it because without facing and fighting evil, it could succeed in its endeavors. So spirit over time as mankind has needed to learn in this time of the fifth civilization being the most evil that has ever been anywhere within the universe. This time of the earth, people might say, why does God allow evil to exist? And really that question should be, why does mankind allow evil to exist? And that is because man must learn how to challenge and face evil 
to understand it, by battling to overcome it, learning to control evil and to prevent evil developing its own aims of destruction, which is its purpose and meaning. So particularly mankind, through the events within the earth, has not been able to run away from evil, has not been able to ignore evil. It has challenged him, whereby he has been forced to face, stand and fight against evil. And strangely enough, and this is strange, but it is true, that spirits evolve more readily, more quickly, and evolve more through the experience that evil has provided. Those spirits who at home have returned from lives where they have experienced and behaved very strongly on the dark path have been quite evil, and yet they have evolved more quickly from these experiences. And in the maturing of this fifth civilization, at your time in the world now, it is a time of maturity, both for the earth and for mankind. And man is learning a great deal from this time and the experiences this world offers. And those who are living upon the earth have and will continue to return home to spirit, having experienced much by gaining greater knowledge and wisdom than perhaps they have ever done, ever before. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing foundation based in Laxfield, Suffolk in the United Kingdom. We have a web page www.erasmus-foundation.org If you would like to be a guest on our podcast or indeed have further questions for us then please contact me on paul at erasmus-foundation.org and we'll do our best to accommodate you. Thank you very much for listening.